What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here and you don't know who I am, my name's Bailey and I love fish tanks, do everything to do with different kinds of fish and fish tanks, uh, tropical and cold water. So definitely consider subscribing if you're into all that sort of stuff. So guys, in today's video, we will be talking about fish diseases and how to prevent them coming back or how to stop them coming in the first place. So let's get on with the video. in this video I'm going to be talking to you about how to get rid of fish diseases if you have them and talk about some of the common ones and uncommon ones that you can do and what you could do to prevent them entering your tank or just making sure your fish are healthy so let's get on to the first one so guys what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about what kind of fish I have and then also I'm going to talk to you about because I've had a lot of experience with my fish uh, getting some weird rare diseases as well and also ones that aren't so common So I'm going to talk to you about the ones that they've had and what I've done to get rid of them So guys firstly if you are into the aquarium hobby and you do keep fish you will know a fish called an Oscar fish I'll put a picture of it up just here. I have two albino tiger Oscar fish in this large tank here and Recently, I've noticed their uh, behaviors start to change a little bit uh, They've had a few markings on them and at first I thought it was to do with um, because they're both male if they were fighting so uh, I just sort of changed a few things around the tank give them more spaces to hide still wasn't working anyway after close examination of what could be in the tank I found out that this tank had worms and parasites in now when it comes to Oscar fish or any type of cichlid they are prone to hole in the head disease if you don't like horrible stuff look away now I'll put a picture of what it looks like up here for a very short time um, and yeah what it is is it's a parasite that pretty much makes the fish unwell, really unwell, and creates holes in the fish's skin, um, which isn't nice at all for the fish, and also if you, if, you're, if you keep that fish, for you to look at. So I researched loads of stuff online, tried to figure out what was the best option for me to get rid of that for them, and I couldn't find anything uh, that was working as such. I used uh, anti-parasite medication, anti-worming medication. That wouldn't, it wasn't really working. Um, their, their behavior sort of perked, peaked up a little bit, but I still didn't know what to do. So after a long period of time, I was thinking to myself, what can I do to make these fish better and happier? So after long consideration, I decided to completely strip the tank down. So nothing was left in it. Uh, I took all the water out of the gravel, the substrate, uh, the plants, everything, and completely sanitized them and rinsed them. I done the same to the filter, but I kept the uh, biological media uh, out the way so that the so that there was some sort of cycled bacteria still in the filter so I wouldn't have to wait as long for the tank to recycle itself because I didn't have anywhere to put these guys so it was important for me to get them back in the tank ASAP so once I'd done that and I filled the tank back up and everything was looking good um, I made sure I didn't put any substrate back in because I know the substrate can be hard to clean sometimes and it can also hold some parasites in there that you're unaware of seeing so I thought if I had a clean slate I'd be easy or be easy for me to see them uh, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna show you a clip of a while ago of what the worms used to look like in a tank so you can see at home what you're looking out for um, if you have this in your tank, then you'll identify it and know what it is. And I'll also see if I can zoom in on some parasites as well. So let's roll to that clip. So guys, what I've done is I've done all that and um, yeah, they were still there. And it was really annoying me. I didn't know what to do. I didn't want the fish to be stressed anymore. And I was just fed up of them being not happy in their environment. So what I've done was I went online after a long time of searching, I found this. This, if you can see it, is a discus uh, disease treatment. Now, discus and this can treat discus and cichlids uh, on the back. But so, guys, the parasite for the hole in the head disease is the hexameter. Now, that is, I probably said that wrong or differently to how other people say it. So, so apologize for that. But yes, it can cause so many different side effects to your fish. <clears throat> for example, holes in the head, uh, skin decay white stringy feces, darkening color, all of these symptoms my fish had. So at this point, I was really, really concerned because I knew that it can kill them if it's left too long. So I got hold of this stuff online. Um, it's, I don't know really the brand of it, but yeah, <clears throat> online. And I followed the instructions inside on how to 
uh, introduced to my tank and how much to add and there's different you add certain amount of drops depending on how big your tank is but this helped massively so now i can proudly say the tank is parasite and worm free uh, the fish are up back in their normal cells they're feeding a lot better now um, they're moving around in the tank, interacting in a better way, less stressed, which is awesome. So if you have a tank at home and you have hole in the head disease in one of your cichlid fish, or maybe an angel fish or something, as long as you catch it early stages, it's absolutely fine. But if not, I really recommend buying this stuff because I can guarantee you now it will work. It will seriously, seriously work. I suppose, guys, like all fish diseases that you come across, as long as you spot them early, early enough, or not till it's absolutely awful and you just ignore it and you think your fish are just looking off that day, definitely always keep in your mind, is it okay? Is there anything I could do? Is it showing signs of anything? So, guys, moving on to the next one. As you guys know, or if you don't know, I'll put a link at the top there so you can check out this video first to see all the fish I have. I have a 64-litre um, cold water aquarium for... They're just all platies in there, all uh, average normal platies. Um, but unfortunately, some stuff, well, this is a common disease that occurs normally in normally cold water and tropical fish, it doesn't matter, but it's called white spot disease. Again, if you're not that liking or cringy about this sort of stuff, look away now, I'll put a picture up right here. Three, two, one, it's up. And yeah, um, it's a white spot disease. It is a fungal disease, which can easily be taken care of if caught at the right time. So I'm gonna show you now what I used to get rid of it when I had it and what I thought was the best, more most effective at the time. So guys, this, like I said, is my 64 litre tank. And it has, or houses right now, uh, 19, between 19 and 20 platies in here. When I first originally got it, I only had four. They breeded, because they're live bearer fish, so they will breed uh, live fish. And yeah, they're great. I absolutely love them. And you know, <clears throat> this is a common disease. White spot is a common disease that's easy to spot early doors because they are literally little white spots all over the fish. Um, and you know, it's easy disease to sort of control uh, because it's so common. It's like me and you getting a cold. Like it's it's common for them. It is due to stress normally or water imbalances if you haven't done a water change in a long time or if your filter needs cleaning, stuff like that. So as much as these are hardy fish, always be careful and always make sure you stay on top of your water changes and filter changes because that is what can affect the fish or bring the disease forward to the fish. Now let me show you what I used to get rid of it. So guys, when I first, and when my fish first had this disease, I went out to my local uh, pet store and I bought the cheapest or the one I could afford, which I thought would be fine. And I was adding it every month, like it said to, but it wasn't shifting it. And I was thinking, what am I doing wrong? Why aren't these fish getting better? And I was getting really concerned, seriously worried about their, you know, their well-being and everything. And I was just going crazy. Anyway, I found online the best, best possible medicine for white spot. And it is this one here by AquaCare. It's called the Antifungus and White Spot Treatment. This stuff, I used it for two days and it went. So it's, seriously, this stuff is so, so good and it's safe for all your fish inside, all your bacteria in your filter. It's safe for everything. So don't worry about, you know, having to take stuff out. Like you do in some treatments, you have to take some bio things out of your filter or pads and whatever. Doesn't worry about that. It's safe for all of that stuff. So I seriously recommend using this one if your fish have white spots. So guys, like I was speaking about uh, the disease that the Oscars had, I didn't really explain properly about the worms. So worms are a completely different thing to what gave them hole in the head. Worms, uh, they can be in any form of tank and they, are quite, they can be dangerous. Uh, normally they come out of the feces or they eat off the feces at the bottom or any food that drops at the bottom and they occur naturally through that. Um, so if you ever see, especially Oscars, because they, uh, they poo a lot pretty much, you've got to make sure that you are cleaning out regularly and making sure that they it doesn't just sit in there for a long period of time because that's how they can form and everything. So guys, when I had this worming issue, like I said, I was also considering different kinds of medications I wasn't sure to buy. So I went on the same line as the white spot treatment and bought this one by the same people, uh, anti-fluke and worming uh, conditioner pretty much. Uh, it's exactly the same, safe, easy to use. The only thing that isn't safe about it is the snails. If you do have snails in your tank, remove them straight away because this will not be good for them. It's unsafe for them. So always remember, if you do have snails, look on the box first because it could affect them. So guys, in this video, we have covered worms, parasites, fungal diseases, white spot, which covers that. If you are struggling with anything else at home and you're not sure if you've got a fish and it's unwell and you're not sure what's wrong, 
definitely uh, pop a comment down below and I'll try and answer it to the best I can and give you the best advice that I would uh, that I would give. Um, so guys, I hope this video really, really helped you out at home or if you're ever struggling with some sort of disease with your fish because I, the reason I made this video, I was thinking about making this video is because I had these problems myself and I didn't know where to go. I would look at videos after videos and read stuff in forums and everything and it just wasn't giving me the answer that I was looking for. So I hope today I could help you out um, to look for the right answer and sort of help you and guide you on what to do if you have any of these issues. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a big thumbs up if you did. Um, and please consider subscribing if you are new here because all we talk about is fish and we love fish so much. So please, yes, subscribe if you're not. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. See you later. Bye.